Good evening. My name is Jay Rothman. I am the host of the show. Welcome to Real Men, Real Talk, live. Welcome back to the studio again. My name is Jay. I'm the host of the show, and I am honored and excited to have joining me in the studio this evening, Evis Love Heath, the man of the land from down under. He calls Australia home. Welcome to the studio, Ev. Thank you. Thank you, my brothers. Looking forward to diving in deep tonight. All right. We have Josh Richer. He calls Los Angeles home this evening. He is coming in remotely from Colorado. Welcome to the studio, Josh Richer. Great to be here as always. Love sharing space with all of you. Beautiful. And we have Mr. Jeff Fasano. Nashville, Tennessee is where he resides today. Welcome to the show, ja, Jeff Fasano. Greetings, everyone. I'm looking forward to hearing everybody's dating strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, now that uh, we're all here tonight, first of all, welcome to our viewers if you are new to the show, please drop in a comment. We'd love to know what city, state, or country you call home today. And uh, if you hear something that you like or love, we invite you to tap your love button on your monitor to light us up. Uh, if you are coming in from Facebook Live streaming, welcome to the show. Same with YouTube and our newest platform, LinkedIn. Welcome to the show, viewers and family and friends. And... Uh, also, if you like what you hear, please share it out in, on your page in your community so that we could help grow our show organically. This is our first shift this year in 2021. We've been coming in live on Friday nights, and we have decided to shift the program to Thursday nights. So far, we've gotten some really good feedback from our viewers that Thursday night is a better night for us to come in live. So hopefully uh, it works for you. And you'll adjust to our new schedule, Thursday night, same time, 6 p.m. And we'll coast through the rest of the year, uh, hopefully. Um, I wanna... what, do, what do we think? Huh? Put it in the comments. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And also tonight, I wanna, I'd like to dedicate tonight's show to Josh Richard's mom, uh, Mrs. Richer, uh, who had some uh, a procedure done earlier this week. And he's in the healing mode. We in the green room had the opportunity to meet Josh's mom this evening before we went live. And uh, it was such a beautiful moment to connect with the woman who birthed this beautiful man that we call Josh Richard today, our, our, our co-host with the most. <laughs> it's been a beautiful time. So grateful that the schedule worked out. I could be here with mom and uh, so fun having her see you guys. We talked about having a mom's episode, actually. So we warmed her up to it when she's feeling better. And then we can drag Jay's mom in and maybe even Evis's mom. And uh, so we'll make it a, a family thing. And unfortunately, Jeff, your mom can't be with us, but she's always with us in spirit for sure. Well, it's, is it possible, Jeff, that you could channel? That you could channel your mom in the show? I do every week. Wow. Beautiful. There you go. She'll be with us then. There she's, it is. She's with us. She, she doesn't know what the heck we're doing, but she's with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any event, tonight's show topic is, uh, are you attracting your perfect relationship and your dating strategy? And here's some of the, uh, for episode 76 that we're coming in live, so here tonight, that is a topic, uh, how to attract your perfect relationship in dating, if there is such a thing as a perfect relationship. Why are you still single? One of the subtitles, do dating apps actually work? Why are you still attracting the same people into your life? What or who consistently is blocking you from attracting the perfect relationship in your life? And is there actually a science to landing your perfect match? And what I like to do is, since uh, we got Evis Love, sitting on the top shelf in this moment with me. Ev, why don't you kick us off and light us up and set us up for a fast-moving show uh, as we navigate through dating? Let's just, let's just slow it down, actually, Jay. I don't want to move fast through this dating show. What about you, my brothers and sisters? Um, is all the dating scene about quickly getting through the date? Or is it about taking your time, getting into some flow, 
getting to know some good energy and seeing if you've really turned up for the date or not. I think about my personal journey, my brothers and sisters, and uh, I mentioned in a video the other day, I've been uh, single for now four years. Uh, in that time, I've had a couple of dates. I will be straight up. And um, it, it's been interesting because, you know, coming into my uh, mid-40s, it's probably different for, I guess, a uh, particular uh, demographic you're, you're at. Um, they're probably different to what uh, cultural uh, background you, you're at. Could even um, be something different to what location you're at. You know, I think we think too much about the dating scene, my brothers and sisters, particularly anyone that's single out there. And drop it in the comments down below if you're uh, single still out there, my brothers and sisters. We'd love to hear your thoughts tonight. But for me, I think it's a real opportunity not to only get to know the vibe and the energy of someone that you're dating, but to get to know a little bit more about yourself. I found there were some insecurities that came up in that day. I found that uh, because yeah. I'd been out of the scene so long that there were some things that I had to check within myself after that day. You ask yourself questions, but one thing that I actually did, I snipped the outcome, any expectation of the outcome of what that date was going to fulfill. One thing for me is that I had an intention going into the date. And what I mean by that, my brothers and sisters, you've got to ask yourself, are you turning up this date? Is it just for, you know, a uh, one-night stand? Is it just for, uh, you know, just to, you know, I'm, I'm going to show, I'm going to put the term out there, there, bust the nut, so to speak. Or is it actually you're looking to get into a relationship or as I call them, partnership to actually get something that is a little bit more aligned to who you may be at your vibe now? for something that is a little bit more long lasting so we can get into this idea that we keep speaking on at Real Men Real Talk Live about love. So my brothers and sisters, I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to be talking about a couple of uh, other sort of strategies, we might call them, as we hope to help you attract that ideal relationship from your date tonight here on at Real Men Real Talk Live. And what was your intention, Evis? Yeah, I was going to ask the same <laughs> question. <Jack. laughs> My intention on that particular date was to obviously get to know the person a bit better. Lovely, beautiful. Because it was from it was from an online uh, the first interaction, and then to be able to actually get that person know uh, get to know them a little bit um, more better on face to face, um, you know, terms was. Uh, perfect you know i think we're going to be talking about it tonight particularly in today's day and age with the uh digital information and uh the tech the way it is now we're going to be asking questions about some of these dating apps that are out there me personally i've never been on a dating app so i can't say too much about them but i know of them but um the experience wise was definitely to uh learn a little bit more about this person face to face as opposed to this digital age beautiful you know in in a title we we talk about um it's basically i use the word dating strategy and i guess one question i want to propose this to uh whoever wants to jump in and answer it is should there be a strategy other than for you have i think what i heard you say if i may paraphrase you was your strategy was to go in with this intention set for what you what you wanted to the outcome to be from that experience in that moment, but what is a what would a healthy strategy look like to attract your perfect mate? Looking at your own, look, looking at your own life, looking at who you are, doing an inner assessment. What are you? What's going on in your life? What do you want? What's happening with you? And then really, what it is is we're looking for a mirror of who we are. But I'm still single, so I don't know what my strategy is. <laughs> well, may, maybe uh, maybe it's about changing the strategy. I don't. I've well, I've never been a dater, and it, it's not something that I've ever done in my life. Is like I I know friends who just love to date. Mm -hmm. They're on dating apps and whatever, and they just like to go out on dates. Um, 
It's it's never been something that that I've done, and I I've never had a strategy. If I happen to meet somebody I like, my strategy is, hey, would you like to get together? Mm-hmm. I think what what Evis is talking about, and what what the real what it really is here is what what are you looking for in your life? And the question is, is there a perfect relationship? Or are we looking for a perfect relationship? And that's what's blocking us to having um, a relationship or a significant relationship in our lives. We could also look at it all, the intimate relationships that we're having with friends Mm. and look at those relationships. Mm -hmm. How intimate am I with, how deep is that friendship? What is, what is there? What do I love about the relationship that I'm having with this person? And just put up all of this into your um, magic pail or whatever, stir it all up, and then you will eventually, possibly, if you're open, meet someone, but mm. I don't know. I, I'm going to learn from you guys tonight. Well, well, hold on a second. I think, I think, yeah, hold yeah. on one sec, uh, Ev, if I may. You're right. Uh, I just want to, uh, I think this <laughs> this was a question for you, Jeff. <laughs> Evie Andrews said, Wait, you know, like Andrews, Andrews, there, be, there you go, there you go. <laughs> See what Debbie Andrews just wrote? Like I said, it's the digital age. No, but what, one thing for me, my brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. you know, we get to a point in our life, and I know uh, most of our community out there, we're, we're quite mature, let's be nice to ourselves, but we're in that particular stage within our lives where we should have a, a good definition of our menu or our ingredients, what it is we want either from that beloved, even from how that is to mirror ourselves. Now, I always say my core ingredients is I want transparency. You know, I, I want good communication. I want honesty. I want that reciprocity, that equal give and receive exchange of energy. And I, and I want to know that someone's willing to evolve. So when I go into, you know, this the, this dating zone, we might be calling it, which I, I would rather call something else like more so audition. How about we call it an audition? Because we're getting to know the person. We're even probably learning a lot more about ourselves. So for me, it's really understanding those core ingredients about yourself before you even step into another relationship. We can't keep carrying around the emotional baggage of relationship to relationship, my brothers and sisters. You know, man, I was straight up with this sister when I went on that date. I told her about my stuff. Are you willing to tell you about yours, my brothers and sisters? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to take a moment just to let that drop in. And uh, Ev, I'm going to invite you to repeat that question that you just asked. What did I ask, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. He's in flow one more time. You, uh, I think what, what I heard you say was uh, – you are willing to be vulnerable out of the gate and yeah. speak your it's truth. Just 100%. And how many willi- of us it's, it's willing are to not. be authentic. It's be right. willing to be authentic and really show that transparent nature about yourself. Because what I find, and you know, like um, I, I talk to a lot of brothers that are in the dating uh, scene, and um, you know, there, there's a facade and a mask that a lot of people still put up to what they feel that other person wants to see. Man, this is your chance to just be yourself, my brothers and sisters. This is your chance to show that little bit of charisma about yourself. You know, this is your chance to show your personality. But if those things you haven't been able to work through from previous relationships, then I think that's when it starts to become a problem. And there's, I've heard plenty of stories where the, the date becomes very awkward particularly how far you've been into the communication with that particular person up until that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Josh, I'm going to hit you with a question right now. It's coming in from Debbie Andrews. She says, do they really want your vulnerability right off the bat? Now you are, I want to, I'm going to, not that I want to label you, but I'm going to refer to you as a professional um, dater. 
<laughs> I, I mean that. I mean that in a very, very loving, kind way. Um, in a very loving, probably, kind way. <laughs> yeah. In other words, you are you are absolutely more active uh, in seeking a relationship or dating than I believe Evis and Jeff are. And so I think that's a fair question to ask um, when you're out there. And I also, I, my understanding, I think, is you've dabbled in the in the dating apps as well. So you've got some experience there. You've got some experience with the, the old school, traditional way of dating, networking and all that. But what she said is on the first or second date, if I may, the, do you think they really want your vulnerability right off the bat? And or um, how how have how do you show up today on your first date? And um, and or what is your dating strategy right now? to attract the perfect relationship? All amazing questions. And uh, being labeled tonight as a serial dater and single, <laughs> single at 45, uh, I'm gonna preface anything I say uh, and say, do not listen to a word I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I am, Josh. I'm listening to every <laughs> word you're telling me because I don't know anything. Right? Uh, okay. <laughs> No, but actually there were some really great uh, questions in there. And Debbie, yes, there has been a shift in me. Years ago, I was on the dating apps. Um, this was probably three, four, even maybe five years ago. And uh, my strategy then was to hopefully write the things that I thought they wanted to hear. Uh, and my strategy now, uh, after years of work, and um, maybe I'm just tired. <laughs> maybe I'm tired of all the bullshit. bullshit. Maybe I'm tired of all the wasted energy. Maybe I'm tired in life. I don't know what it is, but I'm extremely motivated now to skip to the great um, down to earth, heart centered, amazing, beautiful people. The ones who have struggled and have been broken or fallen multiple times and gotten back up and no truth. I am looking for the people who know truth because all the rest just seems like a giant waste of time. Um, so it is weird to out outwardly say I'm looking for the broken ones. Uh, and I said that to a friend one time and he was like, dude, you want drama? And I was like, no, what I want is the people who know truth and what this life is really about. So I have changed my strategy completely this go around, and uh, I've only been back for a couple of months, so uh, I will report on how it's going. But the feedback has been actually insanely amazing. So I put out on my profile my vulnerability, my truth, my, vo uh, my you know, hey, you will not meet a guy like me. Uh, I'm awake. I'm aware. Um, I've fallen. I've had my, uh, you know, setbacks. I'm not perfect. I'm me. I'm human. I'm living this human experience uh, one day at a time. And the response has been, su I just decided that I was just going to go, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm just going to throw out there what I want to come back because we have to project what we want the universe to bring back to us, right? That's the rule. That's the energetic rule of the universe. So I put it all on the line and I was like, you know what? I'm willing to be single and, and or shamed on this app uh, for being too sensitive, too loving, too, you know, all the twos that I was afraid to express before in myself. And the feedback is actually, Jeff, you got to try it. If you want a little boost in, uh, in what you've been doing, the work you've been doing in yourself and how the world responds to it, this is an amazingly fast way to get that feedback. And I have had, so I did, I did the paid, I got, I, one night they got me, the app got me. I did the paid thing where I could see who likes me. Mm -hmm. um, the caliber of women that are in that box, that sort of inbox on the app, like I went, I went through and I sifted through and sort of deleted the obvious no's, um, you know, sort of the, the more, you know, I'm not judging anybody for their, where they are in their path. And uh, I'll wind this down in just a second. But, um, but the caliber of people in that box, really, I was like, whoa, there is a massive change from the last time I was doing this. 
and it isn't anything that I did differently except for putting out all the things that I wanted to come back and being really vulnerable, like Ev was mm-hmm. saying. And mm-hmm. so um, there's a lot and of just- people in my inbox and it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's almost hard to, it's like, wow, there are so many quality humans here. Um, mm-hmm. This is a completely different experience than last time. You know, well, that thanks, is, brother. Yeah, yeah, just, just to ask you a question, Josh. What, yeah. what app is it? What app is it, brother? I'm on Tinder. So, okay. So, uh, Tinder is one of the apps that's been there probably for the longest. Is longest, that yes. So, so, the, I, so there's other ones I think out there. Calling now. them. Uh, <laughs> what did you What did you call dating earlier, Evis? An, an audition. An audition. An audition. The only reason, and the only reason why I say that, because if you have a look at the word audition. The etymology of audition actually means to listen. Ah, wow. I don't make there you this go. Up, I don't make this shit up, my brothers and sisters. Wow. Well, I think calling you know, Tinder an audition is very, very kind. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you know, guys, here, all kidding aside, because I do find this, I find dating apps and I find that all fairly comical in life. Um, that's just my opinion, my humble opinion, my two cents worth. Uh, I did it when I lived in L.A., and I really did think it was pretty hilarious. But here's the thing, guys. Dating strategy, whatever that is. We've done 76 shows, all geared to be who we are. Mm. Mm. Bingo. It's not about going in with a strategy and you meet somebody. It's it's just think about when you're like if I'm out at a music venue and I see somebody and then somebody introduces me to somebody. What strategy I do I put into meeting somebody brand new, whether it's a woman or a guy? No strategy to it. Here's who I am. How you doing? What's happening? What do you want? Yada, yada, yada. Just be who you are. All of our shows have been geared to move within, to love, honor, and value ourselves. So if you have some sort of strategy, all of that is, is up here. Boom. Is there a strategy in life? Or is it just saying, what I'm looking for is this. This is what is important to me. This is what I am. Whatever. Um, One of the things that... I learned and I told these the guys on on and in our last production meeting, um, my mentor asked me a question. He says, "Hey Jeff, are, are you, you know, you're ready." And this was 15 more than 15 years ago. Now I'm 63. Dating in in the world at 63 is very different than dating at 40 40 years old or 45 years old. Believe me. So he asked me that he said, "Jeff, I, I really think you're ready." And he says, what do you want? And I said, we, we did a workshop on, on all of this stuff and writing. He goes, no, no, no. What do you, what do you want? And I, I was a little befuddled. And he said, okay, let's look at your life. Your photography career is doing this. You're working on yourself. You're moving within to your heart space and growing and moving and and really finding out who you are and loving, honoring, and valuing yourself. You're a single person living in Manhattan. This is when I was living in Manhattan. You're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing it. I went, wow, yeah. He goes, that's who you want. Mm-hmm. I love that. Jeff Asano. Um, Mary Kelly says, show up and grow up. I think I've heard that, that one before. Um, <laughs> You'll know within a short amount of time if you're energetically connected. And I, I posted her share because I want to transition us into the question around energy. Um, and, mm-hmm. and, and where I want to go with that is, uh, Ev, you mentioned the audition. And the audition really is about, it's about asking um, questions and then paying attention for the answers. Now, when we're asking the questions, really what the intention is there is really about it's about vetting. It's about yeah. vetting someone. Um, so many of us go into dating thinking that we need to impress the person sitting across from us. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, Jeff, that's really what you were alluding to. If I may paraphrase you, 
our role is not to impress anyone in dating. Our role is to show up. Our role is to vet. Our role is to ask questions and then pay attention to the answers because the answers are going to give you some indication mm. how legit this person is. If they, if you are energetically aligned, if mm. you see the yellow flags or red flags waving, I say exit stage left. Get out. Like call it an early evening. Um, not in a mean-spirited way, but just at least in your own mind and heart space, acknowledge that it may not be the energetic fit. Now, again, I, I want to raise it to you guys. What is, how, how do we, what does energy even mean to some people that may be watching tonight that don't understand or don't have an understanding of what we're referring to when we're talking about energetically aligned? Um, what is, you can, you how can feel it. Really, how do we, how do we introduce uh, paying attention to the energetic alignment on a first date to find a perfect mate? What does Moving, that look like? Let go of your mental body when you walk in. Move into your heart space. Uh, energetically feel the person across from yourself. Do you feel a connection? Do you feel that person? Do you feel that attraction? Not visually or physically, but are you feeling it? In your, it's really about not paying attention to them. It's about paying attention to you. What are you, you feeling in the moment? What are you feeling? This is all about trusting yourself and feeling that other, other, you know, that other person you're with. I'm just, wow, you know something? That very nice person, all that, but I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. It's got to be that energetic feel with another person and, and, it, and, and it, I'm going to not generalize, but you know, if I wasn't feeling this with these three dudes, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> if I wasn't feeling the energetic connection with Josh, the energetic connection with Evis and the energetic connection with Jay, I would, I would not be doing this. And for, so here I'm going to, the very first time the four of us got together, Bingo. I mm. felt it in my heart space. I didn't know. I knew Jay a little bit, but I literally felt the energetic connection with Evan, Josh and Jay right mm. off the bat. Yeah. I love that. Jeff Asano. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Josh, I want to ask you, can you expand upon from your own experience of being a, uh, uh, in in uh, showing up, suiting up and showing up in your in the dating world, um, how are you able to utilize the power of understanding and reading the other person's energy? And and what have you learned about yourself when you go in with that intention set to pay attention to the energy in a room? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's. Um... <clears throat> And, you know, you, you mentioned uh, sort of that vetting, Jay, and I want to just add one tiny little thing to that, too, was I think one of the bigger things I've learned is to trust myself and to trust those tiny little voices or feelings or nag nagging little pulls, you know, that um, that maybe are so easy to just sort of, you know, kind of drive over, you know, or, or fly past, uh, when we're excited about something or someone and that dopamine is kicking in and we're like, wow, you know, this really, um, beautiful person likes me. And, uh, it's easy to not listen to ourselves. And that in my past has always come back to bite me. <laughs> and, uh, so, or in, you know, at a few times in my past. So, um, listening to myself and trusting myself. That's what I'm really leaning into this time. And I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I'm not going to push it. And I'm not going to, um, you know, make make this into something it doesn't need to be. Um, and then, yeah, the feeling early, uh, like you're talking about, Jay. Um, I think for me, you know, <laughs> my my message game is pretty strong, actually. <laughs> I think I, I put on a good message game. Um, but what I've been trying to do lately is get them on the phone and that's where I can feel them. That's where I can feel their sincerity, their genuineness. Cause you know, if I can put on a good 
message game, then so can they. And we're all trying to put our best foot forward anyways, or at least, you know, that's the way I used to run, uh, you know, try to run my dating. But uh, now it's just about being honest and being uh, genuine and being truthful to me. And if that's a good fit with somebody else, great. And if it's not, um, you know, we are all beautiful souls on our own journey and uh, bless you on yours. So uh, I think getting on the phone is an, is a much easier way for me to be able to tell them at their core. And obviously face to face is even better, but sometimes you just want to save yourself uh at least for guys, uh, because, you know, I'm still a little bit more old school and feel like I need to pay for the first date. So it would clearly break the bank if I uh, <laughs> took all of these women out on a first date. And uh, a little bit of vetting beforehand is, is a little kinder on the pocketbook. I, I love how you how you mentioned how there is can be a hormone, a hormone release on a date. Oh, um, and, and the, apps, the apps are designed for that. I mean, I find myself getting pulled in. So didn't mean to cut you off, Jay, but yeah. No, no, I, I think it's yeah. it's important to be aware of how your body gets activated either by uh, the visual stimulation or by the verbal stimulation or the energetic uh, engagement that takes place. I want to take a moment here to answer a question uh, that came through from Jaina Lynn Clark Lott. She asked the question, if, if you're um, considering going on a date with someone and or you, they disclose to you um, on a date that they've had multiple marriages, she's asking, would the amount of marriages count as a red flag? Who wants to jump on that one? I've never been married, so I'm not too sure. I've been <laughs> married. And, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, you think about it. Uh, somebody who's married, married, well, you know, I don't know about that. I've got, a, I've got a friend who's been married in L.A. who's been married, who's on his seventh marriage. And so far, this one's working. Um, Is she alive? But, well, it's, well, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> that guy. Was, that was no. wet. No, I don't mean if he's alive. Is, is the person he's with alive? Mm. Yeah, that you was know, my way. That was that was a Thursday night humor from Jay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, 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 it could be. I mean, just think of. Okay, so here's the thing. Take away, take out of the word, take the word marriage out of it. Just take the word marriage out of it. There you go. There's, you know, what is that? What, what what the heck? What is that anyway? Take the word marriage out of it. It's just a word that some ter that somebody came up with to term something legal that they did. Ask yourself, how many relationships have you been in? Mm. So they've been in, quote unquote, three marriages. So they've been in, quote unquote, three long term. Re I'm using the number three, three long term relationships that didn't work out. Mm. That's the that's way you could look at it. Oh, you've been in three significant long-term relationships that didn't work out. How many relationships have you been in there that, you go. that didn't work out? Well, I, I, think what's, I think what is important is with that information, you can do more. You can ask a couple more questions. The first question I'd go to is why three? And what did you learn from each marriage? Mm -hmm. what, did, what was the lessons learned? And if they, uh, in that moment, if they say, you know, that's a really good question and I'm not sure, I'd exit stage left. Because <laughs> if you haven't done your own work and you there are you living unconsciously and back in a, in, in a dating game and you haven't invested in yourself to look at your part and your role and why the relationship didn't, uh, didn't, wasn't sustainable, um, I wouldn't want to step in into that mud bath. I wouldn't want nothing to do with that. I'm not interested for me personally. Now I'm not in a dating world, but well, maybe I'll save this to my clothes. I'm going to save this next portion for my clothes. Um, and you fired me up. I'm going to jump in where you left off, Jay. How peaceful are you with your past? 
I'm going to say it again. How peaceful are you with your past? You know what? I went on a date two weeks ago and I told her I went to rehab. But when, when the conversation came around to something similar to that on the first date, but I'm peaceful with it. I went there because I was numbing. 90% of the world numbs in different ways. I'm no different than you or, or the other person or she's no different than me. We're all human beings. And you know what? I had my times where I fell and I faltered and I tripped and I fell down and I learned and I got back up. And so it's those lessons, it's the peace I've made with those mistakes and with who I am and embrace who I am. And I'm able to show up and just be me. And that's not a bad thing or a negative anymore. So when we are peaceful with our past or how many uh, marriages we had or me going to rehab or whatever, when we're peaceful with that, it's not an issue. And they can feel that. That's what they're feeling. It's when we're trying to hide that and cover over it and they feel a little uneasiness or your voice flutters a little bit when you're you know trying to not have that come out or or whatever it's those it's those little micro things that we put off on our face and in our energy that they're picking up on that's the uneasiness and that's the red flag that they're like oh wait a minute there's something here that he's not telling me and that's there's there's the truth in there there's something in there he's saying so that's the red flag it's when we're uncomfortable and we lost that you know you know what would a red flag for me would be is if the woman said well yeah i was you know this life i've done this i've done that but by the way i was i I did 10 years for armed robbery i think that would be a red flag (laughs) (laughs) i want to i want to i want to take a moment i just just, What's recurring for me is in, in all of this conversation is, is a lot of George Costanza and Seinfeld. Oh, I love George Costanza. <laughs> hey, I want to acknowledge, I want to thank, um, I want to honor Debbie Andrews right now. First of all, welcome to the live broadcast this evening. We have missed uh, having you live with us. I know you pick us up on replays due to your work schedule and all, but welcome home tonight, Debbie Andrews. And she said, and I want to take a moment to honor you and thank you for speaking your truth. She said, I found myself being very judgmental about the number of marriages when looking at a potential partner. And to, to your point, Debbie, um, that, that question that, that was, that was proposed really, if you think about it, um, there's a lot of judgment that we, we will go right. We have to be really cognizant of are we judging that, or if we ask the right questions and can we, can we get to the response that we are comfortable with so that we don't have to be in judgment in because of the past, because the past doesn't matter. What matters is where we are today. There you go. And if we, if we, what matters is if, if we haven't learned from the past, then that matters. If we have learned from the past, that matters too. So here's my thing. Suppose you ask the question, it comes up, I've been married three times. Well, maybe all three of those marriages were not supposed to work out because the two of you were. Mm. Mm-hmm. Boom. I love that. <laughs> I'm gonna hey Jeff, can you repeat that? One time. <laughs> yeah, should I repeat it as George Costanza? Because Josh <laughs> got a great George Costanza for deciphering about who, if I pay on the date. But uh um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, let's let's look at all of this on a multidimensional basis or on a spiritual basis. You go out on a date. Somebody says, um, "I how many times have, you know have you been married?" That never comes up for me. But this is not about me. This is about Debbie's question, and it comes up. I've been you know I've been married three times, and those three relationships didn't work out. Maybe they didn't work out for the two of you to get together and explore something. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for repeating that. You're welcome. I've had a lot of fun this evening, gentlemen. This is a this has been a fast moving show. There are so <laughs> many more angles we could go, and we could make this we could make this a three hour podcast, but we're not. We're going to stay honored and committed to being um, wrapped up at the hour. And so this is the time of the show. We are going to we're going to go into our final thoughts segment on uh, final thoughts, tips, tricks, and tools. For Bob Phillips coming in from. 
Sedona, Arizona. I uh, hope you are doing well this evening. Welcome to the show. And all of you, any of you that may be, uh, let's say, working through some type of uh, crisis in your life, whatever that might be, we're here to honor you, to hold space for you in this moment, and know that no matter what you have going on in your life, you never are alone. As long as you are open to receive love and caring from someone else, you never have to feel alone or be alone again. And so with that, I want to invite, I'm going um, to put Josh Richer up here in the hot seat next to me right now. And uh, actually, Josh, you're going to go first. Uh, I'd like to have you uh, open us up with a close. And where I want to go with it is um, you've been, I've actually singled you, singled you out tonight because you are, like I said, the most active, uh, I think, single man uh, looking for healthy relationships. And so from your perspective, what would you, if you were to give top three tips to any of our listeners that may be considering jumping into the dating world or um, an app for dating, what would you say, how could you invite them to change their relationship in a dating world for a different outcome than what they've experienced in the past mm. uh, from your experiences. Be brutally and unapologetically yourself, which seems like to me would have been the opposite thing to do uh, years ago when I was trying to bring uh, manifest somebody into my life. Um, you know, we tend to want to dress up and make the hair perfect and get everything in order for people to see us at our best. Um, and I'm not saying to go out on a date and tell everybody all of your dirty laundry in one sitting uh, before dessert is even served because they probably would walk away. Um, but there's a time and a place to be honest with ourselves and with others. And um, you know those times. I know those times. And they're scary. And I understand that, too. Um, and it's been through the rewards that I've got, the feedback that I've gotten in being way more honest uh, with myself and others just go around, uh, brutally honest, that I've seen that, that positive feedback and what that difference means. People are dying for authenticity now. I think the world has changed and the Instagram age of everybody putting their best life forward, um, doesn't lend to a lot of authenticity and a lot of um, realness. And people have also struggled really hard this last year um, with uh, things in themselves they're having to look at maybe for the first time. We've all been brought into this, this new space or maybe a lot of stillness that you've never had in your life before that you've kept yourself busy. And now you have to look at things in your life and that's made you uncomfortable. So I think we've all touched in this vein of, uh, uncomfortable maybe self-reflection and it's not a bad thing to show because we have all been through it whether they're willing to admit it or not we've all been there and so i think for me being being honest has brought the most wonderful things and then another quick note is that um sometimes you might not be in relationships to learn about the other person they are they are a mirror for us and Ooh. i am I have learned more about myself, some good, mm -hmm. some bad, uh, by dating. And honestly, oh, that have been some of the moments I've grown the most is when I meet different types of people and what they bring up in me and looking at that on the drive home going, whoa, what was that? <laughs> what, what is this for me to look at? What is this opportunity here? This is wildly new. And my little circle of comfortable friends never would have brought this up in me at all so i think there's if you're open to looking at uh uncomfortableness as a gift or as a clue or as breadcrumbs in your life uh dating is a wonderful fast track to dropping lots of breadcrumbs in your life and things that uh might be buried down there mm. love it brother yeah. wow ev 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 what'd you make of that Deep, deep. <laughs> so I, just wanted, I want to know about the breadcrumbs. 
<laughs> uh, we could do we could do a show on nutrition if you're interested. Maybe next week we'll do a show on nutrition. But most but, of us uh, are free. So. But, but I, I just want to say uh, real, real briefly, uh, Josh, what I just absolutely loved uh, is that what you said is is that sometimes it's the opportunity to learn more about us than the other person. I just love that. Whew. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, brother. So, so Ev, here's, here's your question for tonight. Um, from an ener energetic standpoint, if you were going to go on a date tonight, what would be your top three questions that you would ask in the audition? <laughs> I'd, I'd keep it very, very simple. Because we know, I mean, if I was going on a date tonight, I mean, do I have any knowledge with this uh, person? Has it just been created by Jay the Roth Man tonight? Have we been in communication up until this point? And this, mm -hmm. this is what I'm saying. If, if I was just to go on the date tonight for the first date, we've got to simplify this, my brothers and sisters. You know, we're so caught up within our heads. Before too long, it becomes a mind game. Now, like what Josh is talking about there, really, do we have to dress a certain way? Do we have to be a certain way? Or could we just turn up and just be? Be who we are now in that moment. You know, simple questions like, how was your day? How was your week? What do you like? What are you planning to do? You know, we complicate too many things as human beings, brothers and sisters, and I think that's why what we've started to see is just a reshape and a remould of what this whole relationship, uh, this so-called dating game is all about. Because to me, that's what it's just been. It's been a, a big game. You know, when I said at the start of this uh, show, have an intention going into this because – it's, it's one thing to go into a date and just sit there and be passive and not show anything about your personality, like I said, your charisma. It's another thing to actually, like I said in this audition, demonstrate who you are. You know, this comes back to a level of self-esteem, my brothers and sisters. It comes back to a, a level of confidence. So for me, I would not even be turning up on the date if I had no confidence. That would be something that would be working up within my life until I go out on that scene again. What I'm finding on the conscious partnership dating or auditioning scene is that, my brothers and sisters, it's not about going out to look for a date. You attract your date. Let me say that again. You don't have to look for a date. You attract who you are, my brothers and sisters. Boom. Man, mm. I'm dating on the astral plane, my brothers and sisters. We've come into a new way of life. When we start to work and get to know a little bit more about ourselves, we actually tap into the things like our intuition. We start to tap into the things where it really spark the chemistry of a partnership. Why do I call them partnerships? Because you're going to be a part of something. Whether that's for the date tonight, you've made the part of that connection. And from my angle, that is what the connection and that energy is all about, my brother. Truth. Mm. Ruth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> love that. Evis love you. Breaking it down. Episode number 76. Viewers. I want to take a moment here just to invite you, if you've enjoyed tonight's podcast and you find it relevant in your life or in a friend's or family's life, please share it out on your page. You will help us grow and bring more viewers and listeners to the podcast. Last week, we were um, humbled to have just under 10,000 people view our show over the last seven-day period. Uh, mm. That was an all-time record uh, viewership. And we wouldn't be there without you. We need you. And uh, we'd like to invite you to share out the work that we're doing. And uh, Ev, just, just, just brought it home tonight. Thank you so much for that. Woo! Jeff Asano, you're up. Who's got a question for Jeff? I want, I want Jeff to be challenged in this moment. 
I don't know. I'm thinking about a lot of jokes. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I just want to let you know one thing. Debbie Andrews got me. So, how so? Uh, we'll talk about that post show. Mm oh. So, uh, would you like and, would you like me to invite her into the green room after the show? Is she sure. going to be part of this conversation? Um. Anyhow, go ahead. Is that, Fire a, away, is that, is that a date? <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Um, um, All right, so who's got a question for Jeff? I'm waiting. Take a nice deep breath, Jeff. So how, you're ready. How do I how do I determine in my dating process on the first date if I'm going to pay for the whole check or not? <laughs> okay, go ahead. If she has man hands, no. Oh, that's judgment there, brother. That's a Seinfeld. I was going to say, there's a whole lot of Seinfeld coming out tonight. Really? <laughs> um, man. This is a, go ahead, Josh. Old, this could be old Jeff or, or recent uh, history, Jeff. Um, what's one thing you would have been most afraid for someone to find out on the first date? Ooh. How much money I had. Hmm. I don't feel that way anymore, but I actually, it's really interesting guys, because I had lunch with a friend today and we were talking about this and he's on a dating app and we were just started, I don't even know how the conversation got there. And I recently had a situation in, in LA with, with someone uh, when I was out there, uh, fairly well-known celebrity, quote unquote. And um, one of the fears for me years ago, um, we, when we met, was the fact that she was on a major television show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that held me back from really just saying, would you like to go out to dinner? I'd like to get to know you, was the fact that she made a hell of a lot more money than me. Mm -hmm. And then there was a part of my life that said, my worth as a person was based upon how much money I had in the bank. And that was a real big big, big challenge for me. The shame and judgment go back to the last show that would come up for that. What do I have to show for myself? Look at this person. They're making X amount of dollars per episode. Why would she want to go out with me? Now, this is years ago. This is not me now. But that's the answer to your question, Josh. That would have been my um, uh, biggest obstacle in, in doing that and I had to really oh, not so much overcome that. I had to look at my value. I had to work on my value as me, as Jeff. Beautiful. And right. I had to work on that. So, so I have done that. And um, it's not about money. I mean, I'm very success, successful at what I do, but that doesn't even matter. Now, go even one step further, and I don't want to cut in the time. I remember going out on first dates trying to impress somebody about all the major celebrities and people I photographed. Mm -hmm. It was all about proving. It was all about this. The mask was up. And we're always on our best behavior when we first meet somebody because that's just a natural way of, of being. But these are the things that I used to do on dates because I didn't value me. I didn't show up being me and knowing that there's a hell of a lot of value in, in, in who Jeff is by just being me. But those are the, the, those are the two things that, um, or obstacles or whatever it was. Um, uh, I hope that answers your question, Josh. That's, it that's does, really Jeff. and you bring up a deep thing for us guys. And I don't want to, I, we're almost out of time. I don't want to dive into it, but I want to take a quick show of hands how many of us feel that we've been dumped because of the lack of money that we currently had at that moment? I have. And so I, I hear you, Jeannie. It's all about the person. It's about the soul. But back when we weren't as awake or aware or dating people that were as awake or aware, we certainly picked up those uh, things for a reason. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Jeff Fasano. Thank you, Josh Richard, for proposing the question. Well, we come at a time of the show where it's time for me to 
put a pretty bow on the show. Uh, I invite a question from any one of you three men. What do you reckon, brothers? Guess and while, sure. while we're waiting for the question to come, I want to welcome uh, our new viewers that have uh, been showing up this evening. David Rogers, welcome to the show. I haven't, I haven't seen you comment before, so I'd love to know where you call home tonight. Anyone else that's watching in silence, uh, please uh, feel free to drop it in. Let us know where you call home. Welcome to Real Men Real Talk Live. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed tonight's episode and you uh, join us next week in our next uh, live episode. I got a question. Go ahead. Okay. Since you're the only one out of the four of us that's in a relationship, tell us what it's like. <laughs> or, or, or okay. Jeff, We're talking about or, dating. Or, or, All the questions have been about dating, yeah. showing up, who I am, what do I do on a this date? All right, you're there, Jay. Yeah. What what is that side of it look like? And on the end of that, Jay. Yeah. And and how do you and the beautiful Mary date? And mm -hmm. do you date? Well, those are those are great questions. Um, you know, I I, I want to say that I. I date every day. Now, I'm not insinuating that I'm poly in my relationship because I clearly am not. <laughs> I choose to be uh, committed in a committed monogamous relationship today. But I love dating. And what I mean by that is I, if we drop the word dating and just look at the action, I love to connect with people. I love to connect with men and women. And what I mean, I don't mean in an egoic state. And many times when we're dating, we're showing up in our egoic state. We, we show up, we dress up to impress. And it doesn't work so well. Because as you said, we, we put our best dresses on, our best outfits on, and part of that is uh, we tell you what you think, we think you think you want to hear. And eventually the truth will come out. And it happens in many relationships with men and women where sometimes it doesn't happen until they actually propose and they're on the, and the day after the wedding where the real person shows up. And sometimes it can be very, very toxic. And so for me, I love connecting. And how I do it is I vet people, I ask questions, and then I pay attention to the answer. And my intention going into every new connection is to have an energetic connection at the soul to soul level. There is, there is nothing that brings me more joy than being relational with people. And for me, being relational is not picking up the phone and Speaking to someone, for me, being relational is this right here, connecting eye to eye on a video chat and really seeing the person, hearing the person, and connecting with the person. Uh, so even though I'm not single and I'm in a committed relationship, I am always seeking new connections in my life. Uh, it just warms my heart. And it's an experience that I never had in my life before. And with a minute left, I will say this, Ev, to answer your question. Um, I don't think Mary and I date. Uh, we're not in a vetting process. We're past that. We are just in a, we are in a relationship where we work on honoring each other, respecting each other, seeing each other, understanding each other adoring each other and loving each other without conditions and including play dates with each other. Um, that's how I prefer to show up in my relationship today. And with that, I want to thank our viewers for joining us this evening on Real Men, Real Talk Live. We have absolutely, I've had a lot of fun. And uh, with that, we hope you uh, catch us on our next episode next Thursday evening at 6 p.m. on the West Coast. 
Peace and blessings. Love you all.